Don't let the flag touch the ground. Have we started the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, how old is Brad Pitt? He's not letting the flag touch the ground. Brad Pitt is a child compared to me. <laughs> Stop. I'm, I'm Brad Pitt. I'm gorgeous. I'm, I'm chiseled. <laughs> I got a lot of muscularity. That's what I do. And I've seen your funny little face. Uh, I did think that Brad Pitt should be... Because I, I didn't want to watch the Meghan Markle, Harry... I know, neither did, neither did Yeah, I. but I happened to have it on. <laughs> I happened to see a clip And now it's become a, a really big part of my life. I, <laughs> I don't even think about COVID. All I do is think about them and the royal family. But D- Don Corleone... Uh, did you watch it? No, I saw a clip this morning. They buried them Oh, hard. my gosh. They made them into... They call them the firm and the institution. They made them into a sadistic kind of satanic, evil, cult, racist. Yeah. She was uh, suicidal and pregnant. Yes, and, and I, they, I saw that. And we've all watched The Crown, <laughs> and we know who Tommy is. So I assume it's Tommy, the guy with the hooded eyes, the tall guy. <laughs> we just can't do that, Mom. That's not allowed. Um, I'm suicidal, and I could use a doctor. Not at this time. We've all deal with it. Deal with it. Suck it up. And I guess it's just global. The world is, I mean, but going you, crazy. You would think with the history of the crown or the royal family that at one point, wouldn't they have learned that if you try to tell someone who they want to love, they're going to leave? Like, it's, it's just happened throughout all the different royals within that family. Right. right. So they keep trying to... To, yeah, you know, um, the interesting control part. Control it, and it doesn't. It blows up in their face. Well, yeah, it. This is the interesting part to me. So, she's feeling really bad. So he's got her husband. So they they only let her out in, in a two month period. They only let her go outside twice. So I'm thinking, well, of course, Harry, her husband, who grew up there and knows all the rules, <laughs> nah, didn't didn't discuss it with him. Exactly. He's out. He was out doing stuff. Never came up. Secondarily, she says she didn't look up the royal family or anything online. Just went in there, didn't even know when she's supposed to curtsy. Just went in innocent. Yeah. She didn't watch The Crown, which has been on way before she got there. I mean, didn't you know you were going into this sort of yeah, stuffy royalty. British... Ro- <laughs> she, she was shocked. There's protocol. So That's I, kind of bizarre to be shocked. I know. But there's nothing more delicious in life than having strong opinions about something you intrinsically know nothing about. But they did do a two and a half. We just, we just want to be left alone. Um, how do you plan on doing that? And we want to lower our profile and just do our work. Yes. Um, so this global interview in 68 <laughs> countries with Oprah, how does that play into your plan to kind of lower your footprint as far as social media? Um, then we thought about that. So we're on camera, funded 300 million, trashing the royal family. Well, oh, this is going to blow us up even bigger. Michael, we're going to, they're going to be huge. So anyway. I, I like the hairy voice you did last week. Harry, well, this is, this is when he gets with the bomb and he gets excited. <laughs> yep. They came over after the interview. They were excited. They don't even sound like the same people. Harry, how are you? Oh, I'm so ever good. <laughs> I had to hold it nice and tight in me bottom when I was talking to Oprah, be all official. Fists flying and legs crossed, chest up. I'm a serious man, but now let's talk about Spotify. <laughs> we want to get a podcast. We want it so bad. We actually have one, but we want your number. How do you do it? Well, we just, we work together and, you know, I call friends and we talk. I called Spring. Oh, yes. Springsteen's still available. I saw the numbers. <laughs> I'd like to do a putty castle with Springsteen. <laughs> what about Bob Dylan? Do you have connections to him? Well, um, maybe I, I can call Bob. Call these people. Michelle! Nope, they don't want any hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> Megan, how are you? I'm, ex- I'm so excited and so fine. Excuse me? Your, your voice sounds totally different than the Oprah interview. <laughs> that was just sort of the chirpy little yuppie that I played. For more sympathy, <laughs> this is my actual speaking voice. Yes, that's a sh- Harry. <laughs> Take your pie hole and close it for me, will you? Yes, mommy. I mean, Marco. <laughs> Harry, you were good with Oprah. 
You took your instructions very well. They bought it hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> we, they told, you know what they said? They said they had no plan. They had no plans at all to make money. They were shoved out, and they said they wouldn't offer us protection. And they wouldn't guard the little kid. The little boy. Well, because he may be too dark. Well, that's what they said. <laughs> Which was so absurd. I'm like, really? Yeah, Brad Pitt can put it together. I <laughs> yes, like it. Yep. <laughs> Did anyone ever say to you at any time whether someone could be too brown or not? <laughs> yes. Who was it? You're the one who brought it up. <laughs> oh, I can't remember, but I'm sure they did. <laughs> Brad, what are you doing here? I just came back from talking to the queen. And I've been a friend of hers for a long time. I walked up to the palace and I saw a guy with a big red hat. And he said, I remember you and that big fluffy hat of yours. I'm going in there. They said, well, the queen's asleep. You can't go in there. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'm going in saying hello to my friend Liz. And this big iron gate here ain't going to stop me. <laughs> what would be more fun than that? Hey, Liz, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing ever so fine, except that bitch Markle went off with Oprah. Oh, I have 2,000 agents in Montecito, British agents, walking around <laughs> finding something. You're not planning anything. Oh, oh no, I'm just investigating possibilities. <laughs> Things can happen that no one knows how they happen. Well, I hope you're all right, Liz. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> anyway. Have I done my daily rant? But what you, what's <laughs> your takeaway? You're defending, daily. who are you? Team Elizabeth, team, you know, because they it'd be funny, the queen talking to Andrew about it. <laughs> well, well, mother, I think it's untoward what they're doing, all this publicity for crazy things. Yes, I think so too, Andrew. Yes, the royal family has certain problems, but nothing like theirs. No, Mom, I'm Andrew, and I never knew Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Who? I mean, I never knew Flam Ninkling. <laughs> You're mumbling again. <laughs> yes, Mom. But Mother, but Mother, that was nothing. I flew on a plane, and I sunned myself on an island. That was all made up. Of course, I had a fifth of scotch before I was <laughs> You're very festive for a man in lockdown. <laughs> anyway... Prince Charles got his ears tucked yet. I thought he was going in. Um, <laughs> but I, I just think there were a lot of holes in the interview, I got to say. And like I said, there's nothing more delicious than having strong opinions about strangers. <laughs> but as far as that show goes, they were dancing. They were dancing. They were. And Oprah was not asking questions. <laughs> you know, well, I, they wouldn't let me out, out of the palace. Okay. Did you tell Harry, who grew up there? Not really. He was off doing his own thing. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, why would you not yeah. communicate with your husband? Exactly. That's my point. <laughs> That's my point. I don't <laughs> these people were weird. <laughs> but they said, you know, they said they said someone advised us to sign deals with live streaming sites. And I do believe it's not because I've done a ton of Obama for some reason these last three weeks. But I think it was Obama and Michelle. It's been a joke, but that they you know. Really? Yes, it just makes sense. <laughs> you didn't have any money. You were president. You were making, what, 400,000 pounds a year? And now you have 400 million. We want to follow you. You're like a blocker. And we're, we've got the ball. We're going right where you go. Well, she was a working actress, wasn't she on a show? <laughs> a working actress, yeah. I mean, she was making a Oh, no, a I'm good into salary. it. I just ordered, I just on live streaming, I bought all of her, her shows. Suits. You I did? Think it was called. I'm going to do a deep dive into <laughs> Meghan Markle. I did try to call her dad in Mexico. I, this, forget COVID, forget this podcast. This is now my all consuming <laughs> thing. I, I think it's very important. No, it is great for the world. It's great that we can focus on it. It's a live act. It's, the crown, the writers are just, they're just, they just have the, they have the TV on and they're writing for the next <laughs> exactly. season of Crown. Exactly. The script survived. You guys got anything? How are things going with the next season of the Crown? Oh, very good. Just pause it for a second. Oh, yeah, we're thinking of something. Oprah, there's a whole thing. Oh, that's clever. All right. It's like next season, it's going to be, and Meghan Markle as herself. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know how they have cast? Right. Just be, that would be great. To play oh, herself. 
I have a great idea, Mr. Obama. You know, they've been up all this talk about me and Megan. Why don't we offer the producers of The Crown? It's on Netflix. We play ourselves in our own episode. Ah, can you say clicks? That's a good idea. Play yourself. That's, that's a real good idea. I'm going to call my people. You have people? How do we get people? <laughs> really quick too, just uh, keep time going. We're at eleven twenty. Just so okay. you guys know. Oh yeah. Okay. I think. Yeah. I, I think we're so good. I mean, that, I mean, that's already like, boom. You got five clips in there. Okay. Yeah, Larry, I think we did enough boom. enough uh, crown, and now let's call Larry. <laughs> there, Brown Larry. Brown Larry. Um, <clears throat> I like doing Brad Pitt. I think it's a good plan. I'm gonna do more of him. I'm gonna stay in Frogmore Cottage. You know, I like staying there, Liz. I know you do. <laughs> Let's call Margle. Hello. <laughs> I'm Megan Markle. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. To all our followers, <laughs> all our fans, and all our listeners, I give you Larry. To all our followers, to all our fans... To anyone who clicks on us and shares us, to anyone who subscribes, I, Dana Carvey, give you Larry Bubbles Brown. Hi, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Anna. Hi, Larry. Hey, Chris. Um, Larry, have you got any fan mail from some boozy old broad? I've got the... Uh, people are sending me jokes for Sandy Sad Tacky. <laughs> really? How are they yeah. different from the Bubbles character? Uh, it's kind of the joke they sent yesterday was uh, I, I didn't quite understand it, but it seemed funny. Uh, I went to a discount psychiatrist for my depression. He told me to wear a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, it's, it's it, funny, but I'm not sure why. It has to portend the idea the Hawaiian f is an antidepressant. The Hawaiian shirt's so so festive and colorful that yeah. it's an antidepressant. Okay, okay. There might be a better. But it was a discount pharmacy. Is that what he said? A discount mm -hmm. pharmacy. Discount pharmacy. So he said, "Get a Hawaiian shirt." Okay, I get it. Yeah, remember the joke we wrote for Max Billing, who was kind of not really tall. Yes. Yeah. It was something about... No, I can remember it. It yeah. was... Because um, he had a bully up in the Bay Area. He's a young comedian. They made comedian. fun of him because uh, he was short and the guy got taller. And he's like, um, yeah, what was the line? God, oh, yeah. He met he met a guy from high school yeah. who was who grew taller than him. They were both very short in high school. And he said, I see you're still short. I see you're still short. short. <laughs> I can see, see you're, you're still, still an asshole, <laughs> but I can <laughs> buy boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was great. Yeah. He used it on the kid, by the way. Oh, yeah. He used it he on used stage. Call him up. Yeah. He used it on the kid, too. Oh, he, he used, used it on the kid. I, yep. could, I thought it was like, I can see you're, you're still stupid and I can buy some boots. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Well, the WC Field joke. Uh, he, he said one similar to that. Uh, I'm, well, wasn't uh, it? Some guy called Field a drunk, and he said, oh, yeah, but tomorrow I'll be sober, and you'll still be stupid. <laughs> yeah, and, and I guess Churchill probably took that, because he said it to some lady whatever at a party. Mr. Churchill, you are drunk. And tomorrow <laughs> okay. I shall be sober, and you will still be ugly. <laughs> she threw an ashtray right past his face. Bobby Slayton comes out with a, who threw the ashtray at Churchill? <laughs> I come to you for the first time as prime minister. I want to play Churchill. I just you want because yeah. Oh, because you read that book. I read the book. I ran into um, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman at the Oscars. <laughs> oh, you did. I was just making. That and up. I look. I saw him because I I loved him in that movie. And I just I was sort of I go I love you. You know, which is fine. Um, and he goes, world's best actor. He goes. I believe we've met. At Piccadilly Circus. So maybe it was a Dorchester. So I was like, it's always amazing. <laughs> Same thing with Daniel Craig. I'm always amazed any celebrity knows who I am. Like Daniel Craig. Hello, Dana. What? How did you really? Know? Wow. Did he was you... at the Oscars too, dressed in a tuxedo ha with a glass of champagne in his hand. I said, are you ever out of character? Exactly. <laughs> but he, you had met before? No. Oh, oh, he just said, hello, Dana. But I think uh, during my heyday in the 90s on Saturday Night Live, they were, in, they were in America a lot, and they were probably like 28. 
So they both seemed a little bit nervous around me. I said, Aww. Danny, <laughs> calm down. And then I went into pit. You're, 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 you're Daniel Craig. You're a good man. <laughs> But that then guy's, you, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Then you jacked him up against the wall and said, I am the Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Jack him up against the wall. Say, yeah, I did. I jacked him up against the wall. Say, listen, squirt, you know, get your special boots on. We don't need a dwarfy 007, okay? Put on the orthopedic wonder. Um, Doing an Alan Ladd impression. <laughs> One time, Jack, I was I was substitute hosting for Regis Philbin on his morning show, and Jack Palance was the guest. <laughs> really? Yes, I am Jack Palance. I have a couple of run-ins with Jack Palance, but he uh, he thought I was making fun of who was the guy in Shane that was five four, um, Alan Ladd. Yeah. And he got kind of mad. His eyes got kind of steely, and he talked about he had like a twenty eight inch waist and his really broad shoulders. Alan Ladd was small. Yes, they put him on a box. Um, on they, Alan Ladd, like Password Alan Ladd? No, Alan, oh. <laughs> Alan Ladd, the host of Password. No, Alan Ladd, the famous actor <laughs> from the 60s to the 50s, right, Larry? Yeah. Okay, different. <laughs> Old school. <laughs> I was doing a corporate date for Toyota in front of 20,000 people in Las Vegas, and Jack Palance was dressed as a cowboy from City Slickers, and we were going to go out and do a little skit. So we were standing there, and they said the, the attendant said, "Excuse me, Mr. Plants." At this point, Jack was not maybe all there. He was wandering around the stadium. They never knew where he was. So they said, "Excuse me, Mr. Plants. There's a car coming through here, and it's all dark, and we're waiting for the show." And he just went off on a blue streak. He wasn't mean. He was just like, "Come, damn the fucking shut up!" Fucking. Like this, I'm gonna do a skit with this guy in front of twenty thousand people in sixty seconds. God, blah, 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 blah. Wow. So we walked out, and then he hit the light, and he just lit up and hit it perfect. Ha, 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 ha. You know, <laughs> then he was really? fine. He, they said that he didn't know he was going to be there in front of 20,000 people. They gave him a couple hundred thousand. He thought he'd shake some hands or something. They go, no, there's cue cards. You're doing something with me, and it, it, there's 20,000 people. So he was so nervous. That's why he was swearing. Oh, okay. And that is the rest of the story. Larry, what about <laughs> you? <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> That's the greatest existential joke of all time. I got nothing. Have you got anything? I've got nothing. Johnny Carson, so uh, you did your spot. I pulled you over. You had a great time. Have you got anything else you want to share with us? Johnny, I'll be honest with you. I got nothing. <laughs> I well, didn't prepare. <laughs> well, uh, we'll be right back. Some careers are shorter than others. We'll be right back with this word from Alpo, Ed. <laughs> they used to do live dog commercials. So, Larry, um, how are you? <laughs> We're just trying to go Good, to 1130. I did, I, did my first, I did my first set in 91 days Saturday night, so that, I didn't think I could do anything, and it was actually a lot of fun. Oh, great. Did uh, your first line kill? Uh, it, the crowd was so hot, everybody killed. Yeah, I was, uh, worked with a uh, SNL alumnus of yours, Chris Gatton. Oh, yes. Yes, I played Laughlin, Nevada with Chris Gatton outdoors uh, with raking light on me like at five in the afternoon with like a half-empty amphitheater. And when I got off, I said to Chris and Tim Meadows, we kind of walked arm in arm into the desert, and I said, guys, uh, no one has to really know about this gig, do they? I mean, you're not going to talk about it. You aren't? No, Chris? No, Tim? Nah. So we kept that one real quiet. That was one, one epic bomb. Raking light, a high wind, hot, in an in a, a amphitheater with like maybe 1,300 people could seat 8,000. Oh, my God. Hello, 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 hello. What's up? Laughlin, Laughlin, Laughlin. <laughs> So what was it like? Was it at a drive-in movie theater or outdoor picnic tables? It was, or? It was out, outdoor show up near Santa Rosa. And, mm -hmm. uh, they had a lot of, they had a big crowd. It was fun. And were they socially distanced? A uh, little bit. Pretty much, yeah. They okay. had uh, heat lamps outside and everything. So. Uh, wow. Okay. Well, uh, the joke you're about to tell us, the joke of the week, no pressure, did you use it and test it out at this gig? I did not. I've never used this joke before. <laughs> Okay, how would you like me to introduce you this week? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I got a million of them. 
You could introduce me as Jack Palance. <laughs> Jack Palance. I don't know. I don't know if I do Jack Palance, but okay, I could do uh, a I could do a Jack Palance ass voice. You know, a character doesn't have to be a celebrity. All right, uh, all right, fine. Al Gore, Bill Clinton, Liam Neeson. Um, Al Gore, be good. Al Gore. My name's because I'm Al- generating a lot of heat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fly private jets and I buy offsets so they plant trees. <laughs> Therefore, I offset the CO2 that my private jet emits. Well, couldn't you just give buy the offsets and fly Southwestern? Well, that doesn't sound fun. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, live right now on the Dana Carvey Flawed Flast, Flan Clastic. Let's welcome him. He just killed at a picnic outdoor theater. And here he is again with the joke of the week. No pressure, untested, did it in the mirror to his room five minutes ago. And here he is, Larry. Bubbly, bubbly, delicious. Brown. Okay. Thank go. you. Thank you, Al. You know, uh, I recently met a, a very reclusive woman on Tinder. She gave me hermit crabs. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> good solid joke. Good solid joke. Yeah. That was a good that was good. Those aren't easy to come by. <laughs> Did you come up with Hermit first and then reverse engineered it? Yes, exactly. Wow. Just comes up Dennis Miller does that. You just come up with the word and reverse engineer it. That's brilliant. I did, yeah, yeah. That works a lot, yeah. <clears throat> All right, Larry, we're gonna bring Paul right on. Who did all the Paul. music and the stuff? He's great. You'll hear him on this podcast when it's released. We may hold okay. it for a couple of months. We don't know if it's too. We'll wait. Wait to hear from the royal family. <laughs> no, we have editing <laughs> capacities. All right, Larry. Well, always a pleasure. Great joke, and we'll we'll confab with you later today. We'll check in. Okay, kids. Thanks a lot. Bye, Larry Bubbles Brown. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Paul Wright. Now, when I moved to Marin County and lived there for 15 years, I, there was a press junket at my little office in our little town. Paul was there doing sound, and we just started talking. Um, he seemed like a nice guy, seemed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, because I knew that I wanted to do some content while I was up there uh, in Marin, and so Paul and I started doing audio, and then we went down the rabbit hole with all kinds of stuff, video, and we worked on and off for 15 years. His, his, well, what happened was, <laughs> sorry, it's too much to unpack. We'll have it back. My friend Mark Hirschhorn is the producer. He was doing, he, we're, the three of us were doing stuff together. And we'd go visit Paul, and he was like the Wizard of Oz, like with sound and his computers and his mics. But he also had all these guitars on the wall. So after really working with Paul for a few weeks, we kind of said, what's with these guitars? Because he's kind of humble. He goes, well, I play. I go, you do? So then he gets the guitar, he picks up the guitar, he starts playing the guitar, and he sounds essentially like John Cougar Mellencamp or Springsteen, like professional quality. Then I realized he has a drum set, he hops on that, then he has a piano, he plays that, then he had like a tuba or something, he comes out... (laughs) So it was really a funny discovery that the guy, the sound guy was the Bruce Springsteen of, of Iowa. Like he's famous in Iowa and he can go back there and play county fairs, right? Well, something like that. Jeez, what an intro. So I, I think that why don't we, uh, well, let's, let's just say this, that when we played the Hitler bunker thing that was like nine minutes long a few episodes ago, um... Paul was recording that, and Paul has a really, really great sense of humor. So it's I he's trying to suppress a laugh out of the side of my. But I'm just kind of bent over right with the microphone. And I'm bringing Jimmy Stewart in, and I'm kind of in a hypnotic trance basically in those moments. Um, but why don't we just to, just to blow things up right away? Is just play one of the things we worked on. So. This, the Clinton Celebrity Chef. So here's an example. We've been doing it for a few years. So Paul, I said, well, I'd like to do video. Paul was sound expert. So Paul learned video by 
by working with me. And, and he got the cameras. And so in my mother-in-law's tiny little house, we set up a, <laughs> a studio essentially in like a six by eight, I mean, a tiny room, right? You had, you were in the hallway with the camera. It was so, and we were doing different content and I had a popsicle stick and I put a picture of Bill Clinton on it. We made it more professional with, and we put a celebrity chef on Bill, a hat on Bill Clinton. And I was on my knees in front of the camera. Paul came over and I was riffing Bill Clinton as a celebrity chef on a show. And I was also doing the voice of the town of the, um, unit manager, the guy who would talk to him. So when you hear this, you're going to hear Bill Clinton on a morning celebrity show, and you're going to hear what happens in real time. And then we'll talk about how Paul didn't really know what I was going to do, and it hit him like a ton of bricks. But here it is, Celebrity Chef with Bill Clinton, produced by Paul Wright, the music, the opening, everything. Go. It's time for Celebrity Chefs. Today's special guest is former President Bill Clinton. Please welcome Bill Clinton. Hi, everybody. You know, I am delighted to be here on Celebrity Chef, and it's no secret to Hillary that I love the kitchen, and I do enjoy cooking so much. So today I'm going to do uh, one of my favorites, which is smoked, uh, smoked sausage jambalaya. It's a great old southern dish, and we're going to do it up all nice and like that. It's going to be a good old time. First of all, what you do when you're going to cook something like this, you make sure always that you preheat your oven. Let me just do that right now. God damn it, I'm burnt. Hello? Hello? I'm burnt. Tony, can we cut tape? Tony, can we cut tape? I burnt my fucking finger. What's wrong? Billy, okay? You need any... What, what's wrong? I, I'm not okay. I'm fucking burnt. Can we cut tape? Can we just cut the fucking tape? Am I on? Oh, Bill, wait, 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 do you need assistance? Or are you? I am fucking burnt to a crisp, motherfucker. Uh, would you cut the fucking tape? God damn it. Um, well, we're, we're all set to go. I don't give a shit what you are. Cut the fucking tape. I got a big old burn mark on my fucking hand off this fucking stupid oven. I was going to preheat it, and the motherfucker was already on. Understand? I said I would turn the oven on during the show, motherfuckers. Now, who turned it on? Bill, we have no knowledge of anybody turning it on. Fuck you. Somebody turned it on. I went to preheat, and I got a handful of hot, motherfucker. So just, are we still on? Cut the fucking tape. Bill, Bill, honestly, no one intentionally tried to burn you. We're just, we're just, uh, we don't understand why it was on. We're looking into it. Well, look into your dick, motherfucker. Because let me tell you something. My hand doesn't lie, and right now it's all black and crispy. Okay, motherfucker? You don't even want to see it. Now, I need some salve. I need ER. I need something. No, so cut the fucking tape. Stupid goddamn show and stupid goddamn oven. Fuck. God damn it. Why do I agree to these things? Where's my staff? Come on, somebody? Anybody? Can I have a glass of water? Fuck you all. Fuck you all. You know what? That whole 98 thing, you know, fuck them, man. That was a big old waste of time. You want to talk about economic growth during my presidency? You want to talk about GDP? Well, fuck you. Uh, Mr. President, we're ready to roll again. I said cut the fucking tape, <laughs> asshole. I don't need your shit. I got a little Celebrity Chefs is experiencing Christy technical Christy difficulties. Christy Please stand by. <laughs> oh, well, we're enjoying that, but sorry you can't see it. <laughs> oh. Explain it. Wow. Like, oh. Visually, <clears throat> what we just saw. Well, visually, which we'll, we'll post this video on Instagram. Oh, nice. So you'll see a popsicle stick with <laughs> Bill Clinton with his chef's hat and me holding that and shaking it for the animation. <laughs> and then um, Paul uh, made my voice as, because I'm doing it live like this, I'm going, cut the fucking tape. And we put really bare beeps in it, so it's almost funnier. And then I would go, well, I kind of changed my voice. And then Paul took it to a next level. It's like, well, Bill, we don't really see that we don't, the oven wasn't on. What? Cut the fucking motherfucker. So he did that little um, noise collage right before Tony talked, right? It's a nice little click like he's pushing the, the button on the mic, you know, just to sell it. But yeah, I, I think I think one of the important things, by the way, hi, everybody. Hi. It's great to Chris be Rios. talking to you guys. Hi. Dex is over there. <coughs> Sorry, cut the cough. Dex, how you doing, man? Good, Good to, to hear you. your voice. Um, 
you know, it's it's he, the thing with Dana doing these things. He would come in and riff these, so you never really knew quite what take was coming. There were no cue cards. There was nothing, and he would just get an idea based on something in the news. And we were we were just kind of making this up as we went. We're green screening little puppets with Dana on his knees, <laughs> hiding below like the frame of the camera. Yeah, and. You know, the action is is basically him wiggling this puppet and and then but making it up as he goes. And so <laughs> my whole job was to not only shoot it right, which I'm shooting a little puppet on a green screen and then doing the post. But really, my job for quite quite a few years with Dana was trying not to laugh, basically <laughs> sitting in this little tiny room he exactly. described holding my my stomach and my sides just in pain, basically, you know, and uh, didn't wasn't always able to achieve that but and anyway these were live riffs was my point and they, what a joy to listen to we have we have many many different we did a things. lot of we did a regis one we have one maybe we'll play we have one with christopher walken which uh well by the way of course we get the the theme did you find that or make that up you found it somewhere right it's so perfect the dun, no, dun, dun. I, I, I made it, so that's an original. So there, there um, you go. So he wrote but that. But it's, it's sappy on purpose. It's supposed <laughs> oh, to it's, sound, it's, you know, it's perfection. <laughs> I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it was the, you know, the epitome of. I think it was at your request. Just, just need that morning theme show that just sounds so happy and sweet. And we're gonna make food, and the whole setup is, you know, this kind, gentle. Let's get the <laughs> yeah. celebrities. Yeah. Oh, home. in the beginning, he's so happy. But, you know, <laughs> we're gonna make my mom's favorite jump. <laughs> and uh you know first thing you always do is preheat your oven god damn it i'm burnt and that was it <laughs> and so i'm riffing that live but paul has a great sense of humor but that time that and you could see why that idea would hit him like a ton of bricks then you kind of eventually sort of fell over or at least after i finished and you were in the fetal position for no, quite it, some time just laughing yes <laughs> it was it was the hardest I ever laughed, and we were um, we were filming some behind the scenes for a couple projects you had going on. So we had like some cameras rolling, and I I think I I kind of knew something was gonna turn, but he was just being so sweet, like oh it's an old it's an old uh, you know recipe that me and Hill like to make, and all of a sudden he he's gonna go for the oven, and I'm thinking in my mind no don't do it, <laughs> and, and, and then he does. And I, I'm, I'm watching, and I just, I cannot hold it, and I'm, I'm covering my mouth. I'm holding. This is like the best take he's ever done. And pretty soon, I'm spitting all over the equipment. I'm, I'm laying on the. Ground. It was I, yeah. It was a seizure. I, I, I somersaulted. You know, it was terrible. I, I felt so bad. And and Dana, you just kind of kept hammering it home. <laughs> so. Well, it kept it, going it was, on. Yeah. Well, the good, the, the funny line to me was, we're, "Well, we're gonna, we're gonna look into it. We'll look into your dick." <laughs> motherfucker i mean that's just very potent i'm sorry if the kids are listening but look into your dick motherfucker when uh, i love the turn i mean the idea of this inspiration from me was everyone has some angry person behind the mask somewhere and the idea you get happy celebrities on and they're really happy doing their thing and then it just turns i don't know should we play the yeah well we did one this is where paul went next level for what he does so we decided to do it with Christopher Walken, which is much drier, but it's also funny. So Christopher Walken is got he has his recipe, and then he gets burnt. And I, I got a little better with the animation. I had Christopher Walken's face, which we'll put this on Instagram. It goes to the camera and back. You'll see. I got a little better with moving the puppet around. And then you'll see where some things happen, and, and, and Paul um, actually does some really cool sound effects. It's a little bit longer, but it kind of grows on you because you can once you know ahead of time that he hatches this plan of how he's not going to take it like Clinton, Christopher Walken is going to get revenge. Okay, let's let's play that one. <laughs> the more you see him, the funnier they are because oh they all start with Paul's theme. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> it's time once again for Celebrity Chefs. Today's special guest, Hollywood film star Christopher Walken. <laughs> Now, please welcome Christopher Walken. Delighted to be here on Celebrity Chef. Today, gonna be making chili. Mama's favorite recipe for chili warms your cockles on a cold winter day. 
But first, we're going <laughs> to stew some tomatoes <laughs> on the stovetop. Go! <laughs> uh, Mr. Walker, are, are you okay? Can you continue or we're still rolling? No! No! Pain! Hot! Sensation! Not good! Don't like it! Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon? No one told me the stove was on. What? Yes, oh, of course, yes, Mr. Walken, the stove is not on. Liar! <laughs> Excuse me? I'm sorry, is there anything we can do? I mean, well, how about if we take a short break, Mr. Walken? Not good enough. Someone must pay. <laughs> We're not understanding up here, Mr. Walken. I mean, what do you need to get started? I'll tell you what I need Here's right the turn. now. First, first I need, I need your body anesthetized on a slab of cold marble with me and mama's best tool smiling over you. Okay, pause. Um. Okay, like that's the turn. And when mama's best tools, like, I'm sorry, but that's the stuff that makes my brain happier than anything. I need you cold and anesthetized. And yet Tony doesn't get it. So, okay, let's continue. Why doesn't Tony's headset work? I just don't I know. know. He never understands he's being threatened until it's too late. Go ahead. He's so focused on his job. Yeah. Sorry, Ms. Warren, do you have all your ingredients for the chili? Sure. Sure thing. Ingredients. First, they need to be harvested. Initially, I'm going to remove your spleen. Spleen's never put up a tussle. Then I'm going to separate you from your pancreas. Pop! <laughs> Next up is your Lanix. <laughs> Always delectable. <laughs> then with daddy's special forceps, I remove your kidneys. Whop! Squap! Hop! I'm sorry, Mr. Walken, this doesn't sound like chili. I, is this some kind of shepherd's pie? It's not that specific. I like to call it human stew. Funny thing about human stew. It's got a ton of protein and only three grams of carbohydrate. Uh, well, uh, that, uh, that sounds pretty healthy. Are you ready to begin? Oh, yes. It's important, Tony, that when the cops come, there's only one story to tell. <laughs> so, this is all Paul. Messy work, this human stew. Hello. Oh. So delicious. <laughs> okay. Wow. That was better than I thought. Oh, man. Damn. So, Again, the visual with the popsicle stick coming closer pop, to the camera. Pop. <laughs> and then Paul, he goes off and he does the chainsaw. <laughs> you know, and then we had two puppets made, one with blood on it. <laughs> and uh, it's just so funny. That's, yeah, we got to post that for the yes, people who like sure. a little a little cannabis. <laughs> but you can I be. I still like the idea. I mean, I think just the turn is still gold to me uh, with anyone, modern, you know. Mm -hmm. The celebrity chef needs to come back. And get um, <laughs> it may be something we do during our break. We can have you come down and help us. It, it's so much easier now. I mean, Paul was working with 2005, 2008 technology. It was a lot more beginner. Now everyone can do green screen, right? I mean, it's much oh, easier. Oh, yeah. I mean, you were um, you were kind of ahead of the curve there on some of this homegrown stuff because, you know, um, I've said this a lot of times. This is this, we were doing this. Um, I'm so lucky for one thing because I was sort of at the beginning of my career here in the Bay Area. I'd been doing a mm -hmm. bunch of sound things, but I was also expanding. And to meet Dana when I did, it was just kind of ridiculous. Um, and it, I'm just going to throw it out here now, and I don't want to embarrass Dana, but you know, I wouldn't have the company that they have right now, and, and people, the great people I work with, and the companies and things, uh, if it weren't for all the stuff I learned working with you and it was it it was like being thrown feet to the fire on this stuff because Dana was super you know creative and always has been and and uh, the the rate at which different ideas would come and we'd be shooting things and I would be turning it around and learning on the fly all of us were kind of 
learning how to post this stuff ourselves mm -hmm. without a huge staff. And it was mm -hmm. a blast, man. I mean, wow. it was just like, I, yeah. And I, the ideas yeah. are still evergreen, but we all, we also did a newsman character. I got a hold of a wig and I played Tom Rathkrite. <laughs> and that original video, that conceit was that he would aggressively tell a story and then he would detract it. But the damage was already done. <laughs> and so I love when they go, and then he's uh, guilty. Apparently, he did commit the murder. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, Kelsey Grammer is not being indicted for murder. That was Kevin Flammer from, you know. So that, 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 the way of, like, a prone face newsman who never shows this. So that was another fun one. We did a lot, and we did a lot of music. Sometimes I just play the guitar and make up silly songs. Well, I'm just oh, saying. Yeah. I'm just saying I mean, what everyone's thinking. That one. Oh, that was one of my favorites. It's kind of like if I wasn't such a nice guy, I'd say this, and then you say it or whatever. But we, yeah. we gotta. We, we should pull that up. You know, one thing I would also say, you know, for for people that follow Dana is they they think of him with music as like a drummer because you you know the drumming on Wayne's World and doing mm -hmm. all this stuff, and you are a good drummer in all this. But he's also Dana is also a just a great musician all around and a in a guitar player, a keyboardist. Mm. He he picks up all my guitars. He does he just kind of tunes them however. And it's just uncanny the way you know he can imitate musicians the way he does impressions of people. And they're not only spot on with kind of the the attitude and the flair or whatever. The words that he spits out in the moment when he's just riffing these, on these things. We got to get a hold of these. Yeah, I mean it's just it. A songwriter would be crumbling, and you're like, "How's he doing this?" Just as kind of like quasi comedy. Right. <laughs> so, quasi comedy. Uh, oh, what? Hey, here we go. Uh oh. Is that note there, right? Oh my gosh. These are the, these are some Beatley chords. I thought you'd appreciate them. Just this D. Very nice. Ooh. If I can get an ooh out of Paul. <laughs> Hey man, like we... this is what would happen. We'd work on all these little sketches and then all of a sudden there'd be an hour or 90 minutes of just jamming and goofing around. And pretty soon there'd be another thing we had to had to finish. Um, we, mm -hmm. we took a few songs there um, and I, I still can't just say enough how much fun that that, that all was. And mm -hmm. in the midst of all this stuff we were working on, like we're working on things for some pretty serious projects just to do all these little things. I mean, what a blessing. And yeah, we did. We did a commercial for Netflix before Netflix was Netflix. They hired us to do a thing about watching movies on the computer screen. And Paul did all the all the shooting and technical part. We played the uh, a lot of Vegas gigs with him and his band coming out at the end. And we would do chop and broccoli for like eight minutes or something. <laughs> oh, so my it was gosh. A, it was a lot of fun. We, we have to do this, you know, we, we're planning on getting a video component and it would be what we all saw, like with the Celebrity Chef, would be fun to have you back and do other ones mm -hmm. where we can all see the, the audience, all our fans, viewers, uh, family members <laughs> can see it. <laughs> But I could see we, we need to do another uh, segment with you. <laughs> this goes by so fast. Should we play some of um, World's Catchiest Song and just... This is another thing that we worked on, um, some music. I had a little chord riff called The World's Catchiest Song sitting around. This is the world's catchiest, and, and it tells you it's catchy and it's catchy. <laughs> and Paul loved it, and so we decided to do it, a production. So Paul wrote the middle eight, which fits perfect and is the best part of the song. We bought ourselves a 12-string Rickerbocker. Yeah, yeah. So that he would have the sound of George Harrison. He had friends harmonizing, and then um, <clears throat> this came out. It's it's so we'll we'll just play this. It's four minutes long. We'll close off with this, and then we'll come back and say hello. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, step right up for the words catchy song. <laughs> Catchiest, catchiest song <laughs> You're gonna be singing it long, long And I'm gone <laughs> And this is the catch <laughs>
get to the best part. The whole thing's the best part, you idiot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I love that uh, ring, that little <laughs> Rickenbacker. So that oh, was an man. homage to the Beatles. Oh my god, that <clears throat> was hysterical. I imagine like this, you doing a, a video with all this <laughs> background and like go-go dancers and the whole... I think it'd be fun just to sit with a guitar and just lip sync to that song and have the lyrics underneath, you know. Oh yeah, thing, you it's, know. The song makes you dance, and it's it lives up to its name. Exactly. It was, a, it was a it's a it's like one of my favorite memories is um, we we did it in Vegas a couple of nights where you're yeah. just you know having fun with it, mm -hmm. and just for the last few minutes of the show, Dana would bring us out. He'd you know fly the musicians in and everything, and and we do a full sound check in the whole nine yards in these beautiful theaters yeah. just to do this just song do and like chopping broccoli yeah. and uh right. it was a good oh, man, plan you, you 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 always kill there but it was so fun you had a full band that he's doing all of oh, course yeah. dana takes it to pretty far with you know working the crowd with we it, but. me and dennis miller and kevin neeland played the iowa state fair and paul's from there so he and his band we did a whole thing there at the iowa state fair <laughs> Kind of like this, you know, the, the SNL band in the side. Yeah. We, we did their walk-ons and stuff. So and then... you should have him record. You should do a whisper song with him. A whisper song. I like these new singers that whisper. You know, <laughs> I'm feeling everything you're feeling. I know what you're feeling. I'm feeling everything I know. You know, I'd like to do a whisper song because I'm not a natural singer. For that one, I, I kind of did Hermits, Hermits. You can run, you can hide, but you're too busy to run <laughs> So people go, shut up, Brian. He doesn't sing like that. Yes, he does. Um, but, um, Paul, we have to do, we, we're going to have to have you back because we, we're doing this other segment. But, oh, absolutely. And just talk about the Beatles. But I just want to know before we go, what is your name of your company and what are you doing? <laughs> Video production? It's, it's the worst name ever, but it's Paul Wright Productions. <laughs> That's crazy. So, Where'd you come up with that? I know, right? I didn't have a name for so long. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, that's my LLC. But, you know, I, I'm tons of corporate video and, and passion projects and things up here in the Bay Area. So I'm super lucky. Um, and uh, if, if, if it makes sound or if it has pictures, I work on it. And I have a great team. And, yeah. and uh, again, Jeez, I owe right. a ton to you, Dana, for all the stuff we did together. I learned Not so much all. over those years. And it's always great to catch up. Let's, um, let's we'd, revisit. We'd love to talk more anytime you ever want. Oh, I want to talk. We're fanatics for the Beatles. Uh, and he has, you know encyclopedic knowledge of what they're doing technically and stuff but also he's uh just a super fan like me but we yeah we got to do a whole nother segment there's way I, I i find this with people i revisit it should be the a whole hour with you easily because it's it's but i'm so glad we got those two chefs out and the song and we got a hey. sense of of our uh, our history together but i'm inspired if we can do more celebrity chefs just with modern people like doing with pelosi or trump or whatever you know or any Fauci. Kind of, you have to do Fauci. Do it with Fauci. He'd be perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's my mother's favorite recipe. <laughs> what? Fuck it, I'm burnt. <laughs> Excuse me? I'm fucking burnt and I'm Tony Fauci. Go fuck yourself. And he walks off. This is just very quick. <laughs> oh, there's so many. Yeah, it, it, there's... <clears throat> 
plenty more in the vault, so we'll have to ha- have to try to have some fun and make some new ones. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. We'll. Uh, all right, Paul. Well, this has been a pleasure. I'll check in with you later. You were a very Thanks, enjoyable guys. guest, Bye. and uh, that was really really fun to hear that walking one. I haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> oh no, it was great. Hey, great hanging with you guys. All right, really appreciate it. Okay, Talk to you soon. Take Bye. care, Paul. Have a good day. Bye-bye.